expensive video. So, um, we're about the same height, right? Yeah. I'm wearing heels today. Okay. Should I take them off? Okay. So, this, um, the base, usually you take out the end pin. We're about the same height as here, so this should be fine. So, pretty easy. Just head to the bottom, pull it out. This is at six notches. So, boom, you do all your cracks. And yeah. So, the way how we gonna, how we're going to go ahead and start with the base, draw what we need to again first. Great. Chill put the base in front of you. Keep your feet together. Step now in the V. Step out. Make sure you're nice and loose. Pull the base up on the neck and bring it into it. Okay? Kind of like in my hip. Mm -hmm. So I do it right parallel between my belly button and my hip bones right here. So put your feet together. Step out in the V, and then step out. Make sure you're nice and loose and bring it in. Good. And how does that feel? Good. Does it feel nice and secure? Yes. Okay. Um, if it doesn't, we can go ahead and try it again. Put the base either a little bit closer, a little bit farther, mm -hmm. or step closer to it. Yeah, I think actually, it's funny. I want the neck really close to my face. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I think this will start here. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is work on our left hand. So go ahead and put your left hand out in front of you and pretend like you're holding a can of Coke. That's a really tight can of Coke. Okay. What if it was super hot and you spread your fingers? Yeah. So you have your nice big C in your can of Coke. Now bring it out to your side. Turn it by, make sure it's about even with your ear and hinge at your elbow and swing it in. Yeah. Just like that. So, um, yeah. So that's the, your left hand, and then your right hand. Um, we're just going to do pizzicato. So you're going to want to place your hand somewhere around this vicinity. And for the kind of base we're going to be doing, you want it to be not on your tips, which is for the other fingers, but on the side of your fingers. Mm hmm Yeah. Perfect. So now let's try doing our four open strings. So go... G, G, G. Good. Great. So the four strings we have from top to bottom are G, D, A, and then E. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and learn a song. Um, and so as a bass player, we're going to put the bass line. <laughs> so I'm guessing you're familiar with Mary Had a Little Lamb. I am. Um, so listen to me play it once. Um, So we're going to play this in the key of D. So it starts on D, D, mm -hmm. and can you find this note? Yeah. All right. So do you want to just go ahead and try playing the bass line with me, and I'll sing it with you, the melody? Where should I hold the bass when I'm playing on open strings? You don't really need to hold it. You can kind of have your arm just try not to um, get in the habit of putting your elbow in, because remember, we learned arm out to the side to keep it up. So you can just kind of keep your hand kind of resting there. Okay. Um, keep your fingers on top, because remember we're holding our nice big Coke can. Oh, so still keep Yeah, so keep them on top, you just don't have to put them down. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna sing the melody, and then I'm gonna play the bass on with you, all right? One, two, ready, go. So that was really good. One thing with your left hand, make sure your notes just ring out. 
So just yeah, mm -hmm. I because I was I felt like it was kind of like they were muddling together, and that's totally that's okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead. Um, this time I'm just gonna play the melody, and you're gonna play the bass on by yourself. Um, but let's go ahead and start uh, our bass from scratch. So go ahead, put it across from you, feet together, step out in a V, step out. Go ahead, and make sure you're nice and loose. Bring it into you. Hold your coat can out to the side, and hinge at your elbow and bring it right in. All right. One, two, ready, go. And now we're gonna go ahead and learn a song. So as you can see, I put your little tapes with pencil on the side. Um, you should see them on, do you see them? Yeah, I know, I definitely do. Gotcha, okay. So pretty self-explanatory, we're gonna be playing what we call first position. So if we put our um, coke can out to the side and swing it right in, that should be just about where first position is. Meaning I don't really move from here. So, yeah. Like, all the notes could be played. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Exactly. So, as a bassist, one thing that's unfortunate is that between here and here is a whole step. So between you, here and here is a whole step? Yeah. Okay. So, you have to <laughs> shift a lot. Ah, I have small hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, you'll notice when your hand is down. So, try putting your hand down, like a broken elbow, and then try to reach over. It's kind of hard. Now bring it up to where it should be. Now bring it too high, too low, and now just right. Mm -hmm. See how that's much easier to hit the notes? Okay. So now we're going to play what we call the monkey song. It goes like this. I'm a little monkey climbing on the ladder, climbing way up high to get a big pink banana. I'm a little monkey. Climbing down a ladder, climbing way down low to be my pink banana. Alright, can you sing it with me? Mm -hmm. I'm a little monkey climbing up a ladder, climbing up high to get my pink banana. I'm a little monkey climbing up the ladder, climbing way down low to be my pink banana. Okay. Great. So, um, these are just do 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 re 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 mi fa 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 mi 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 re 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 do 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 do. Yeah. So if we're in the key of D, what is do? Good. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. E is going to be your first finger. Yeah. Should I play it with my pinky? Yeah. Perfect. <sighs> so, I'm going to make your life easier. It doesn't just have to be your pinky. So, with string oh. instruments, when we say one, we mean one. Okay. So, you go one, two, three, and four is what it one, is. One, first finger, second finger, third and fourth. Mm -hmm. And so, the nice and easy thing about string instruments is that two really means one and two. Four really means one, two, three, and four. So right now, you're kind of flying your hands up in the air. You can leave all your fingers down. Oh. So your pinky doesn't have to be responsible for everything. Your other fingers are Oh, I can use all four of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So. And I could do that. Mm hmm But let's go ahead and hold our can of Coke again. Yeah. So go ahead. Hold it. Swing your elbow in. And now um, try. Well, do, re, mi. Here, so fa is actually I could just do open string. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, because we're in first position. So yes. Stay so we don't have okay. to shift at all today. That's good. Uh, <laughs> and go ahead and show me your wrist with your elbow all the way down low, and way too high, and way too low, and now just right. And that's where you're gonna find that you have the easiest ability to hit all the way a whole step. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you wanna try it? Yeah. With me. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Yeah? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. So, so now look at your elbow. Yeah, it goes mm -hmm. down. So the second you drop your elbow, what you're going to find is your pinky can't reach as far, and it's going to go flat. Yeah. So the way to do that well, is... Well, this muscle, like, gets stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so... <laughs> so when I'm playing up here, should I be playing on the tips of my fingers or the pads? So um, with most string instruments, you play on the tips, but for bass, because it's so thick, um, and you'll also see the neck is just a lot wider, so you can actually play, like... Not quite the pads, but play right here. If you feel on my fingers, you can feel where yeah. it's thickest. So that's where you want to be playing. And do I engage my thumb pressing here? Yeah, is so your hum? thumb, so if you're holding your soda can, um, and your soda can is your wrist, it's going to be your thumb here. Try to avoid doing this kind of thing, because if you put your thumb like this, where's your elbow going to go? Down. Mm -hmm. So it should stay curved? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's so what I was doing. It was... Yeah, okay. so that'll get you. So let me go around behind you yeah. and walk and round to play it again. Okay. One, two, ready, go. much better this time. I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape right where I want your thumb to be. Okay. So right now your thumb's kind of curling around and you want it to be right on this piece oh, of tape. Oh, like that? Yeah. Okay. So that'll allow your thumb kind of to be a hinge more. Okay. Okay. Um, now try it again and... Much better. Does that feel a little bit easier yeah, to reach around? Yeah, it does. It it's against what my hand wants to do, mm -hmm. but it does make better yeah. sound. <laughs> it's it's a little bit hard the first time because you want to just be casual with it. But if you really like keep that big C shape in your mind, it'll really allow for your hands to move better. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you kind of understand how the strings on the bass? Work relative to like tuning. Yes, and my question is, mm -hmm. should I keep them spread apart like that when I press all four down? Yeah, that's typical. Not like just yeah. jumping all up like that. So you want it to be I, in an ideal situation where if somebody were to look at your hands, where they couldn't mm -hmm. tell which string, you're, which note you're playing. So should I not release it when I'm playing open up here? Mm -hmm. I should keep it over. Yeah, exactly. Which, but that, that's. So Bad don't playing when you. Mm -hmm. So we want to pretend that there's a little tunnel. We want to pretend that um, you have a baby living underneath. I was gonna say dog, but <laughs> you don't it so well. So you have a little baby living underneath your fingers. Yeah. And so in order for the baby to, you know, give enough food and everything, you have to have a little space. So if you flatten your fingers too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So while we are still playing on more of like the pads, we still need to keep our fingers nice and rounded and not flat. What makes that noise? The buzzing. That's hitting your pinky. So you don't have to... Oh, that noise. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's because you're not pressing down hard enough. Wow, okay. Wow. So remember, it doesn't just have to be your pinky that's doing all the work. Right. Your first three fingers can press down too, and then your pinky. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So the little, do you hear it goes, da, da, da. Yeah. So the little. It's my yeah. pinky, it's vibrating underneath my pinky. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, so why don't we go ahead and try that with your first finger again. So just do that. So go ahead, and where should your other fingers be? Still down. So not be down, but make sure that I can't tell which note you're playing. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Ooh. Um, let's go ahead, and if we were to try this song in A, how do you think you would finger it?
Exactly. So a cool thing about a lot of these songs we're going to learn is that you can play them in most of them two you on bass you can do most of them in two string with mm -hmm. two um keys without having to do any shifts cool. um to do the monkey song on the a string you'd have to shift one mm -hmm. but so minimal shifting is required um so let's go ahead and try that in a um so one two ready go cool thing about bass and string instruments in general. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're going to go back to the key of D and we're going to learn the bass line. Okay. okay, so just go ahead and sing the bass line along while I play it. So uh, we're in, in D? In D. So just go ahead and sing it. One, two, ready, go. Oh, am I singing the bass line? Bass line. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So sing the bass line. One, two, ready, go. Da 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 Can you attach solfege to that? Do, so, do, ba, ba. Do, so, do. Good, good, good. And in the key of D, do you know what notes those are? D, A, D, G, D, G, D, A, D. And did you see what I did for Fa? I went up an octave. Oh. So. Can you think of how you could play that without using your left hand at all? So remember saying Okay. Yeah. Yes. Alright. So now let's go ahead and try it again and you're gonna play the bass line. Okay. So another cool thing about the bass is that you can play one, four, and five in the key of D and A without using your left hand at all. It's quite convenient. Um, one, two, ready, go. today. Um, it's not helpful. So um, remember we started feet together, out in a V, stepped out, make sure we're nice and loose, bring the bass close to us. Mm -hmm. So now um, so now here let's try again. So did you see how you corrected yourself? Just I then? did. I scooted up a little. Yeah. So, so um, I don't think I have to start as far back. Yeah, so sometimes you can, if your bass is at an angle away from you, that means you're probably too far. The bass should be just about upright when you're holding it and arms way away. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. Can you lead me through it this time? All right, feet together, turn out, step apart, just make sure I'm let nice and loose, bring it in. Okay, now I don't have to move. <laughs> okay, great. Can I go? Oh, can I jump? Yeah, go ahead. And hinge, there we go. Can you show me broken nerves? And too high, too low, and just right. Perfect. Um, and then, yeah. So that's it for today's lesson. Um, do you have any questions? No, I asked a lot of questions. I think I got a bunch answered, but thank you. Okay, great. Cool. Ta-da.
Welcome to base lesson number two. So um, let's go ahead and start with the base. I already took your end pen out. Right. So nice and easy. Do you remember how many notches I told you to take it out to? Six. That's the Yay. one. Yay. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. Do you remember how we start? Mm -hmm. uh, feet together. Put them apart. Step apart. Nice and loose. Mm -hmm. Adjusting a little bit and bring it in. Yep. And how does that feel? Good. I'm just touching my chill up. So yeah. Okay, great. And can you go over your left hand? Can of Coke all the way out. And oh, my markings are gone. I can do it. Do you need me to repeat them? No, on? let's try it. Let's... Sorry, I forgot it took you long. That's okay. If you need them, I have some great. And because it, it should feasibly be right there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that looks about right. Okay. Um, and do you remember where your thumb goes? Yep, in the back this time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start up, and I'm going to actually have you put the base down, okay. even though we haven't played something yet, and we're going to go with a bow, mm. and that's just how you put it down, perfect. So, um, pretend that my cello bow is a baseball. Okay. So if you see right now, the hair is all loose, mm -hmm. so we don't want it to be like that. So we're going to tighten it using the screw, and so go ahead, righty tighty lefty loosey. And so the thing with this is you still want it to be smiling. So right. once it's gotten to a flat line, if you've gone too far, you don't ever want to be frowning. The bow, not mm -hmm. the... Yeah, so if you have a little stick parallel to the ground, it should still be sli smiling. Okay. So you can actually tighten that a little bit more. Um, funny story, first time I ever touched a cello bow. A little bit more. Um, first time I touched a cello bow, I was like, oh, cool, look, you can tighten this so much. And I was just sitting there like... Oh, Mr. Green, I listen to him, and all of a sudden, pew! That's how I broke my first bow. It's okay. That's all you get that bow. It's only 80 bucks. It's not a big bow. This one is 500. So, ha. Um, so yeah, um, things with bows. Try to avoid touching the hair, because um, if you get finger oils on it, it makes it not as good for getting a good attack. So, um, I'm going to show you. Your bow is a lock, okay? So go ahead and hold it with your left hand. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And in order to unlock the magical powers of the bow, you need to find the right key. Mm. So go ahead, give me a thumbs up. I found the key. So if we see right between, this is called our grip, and this is called the frog. Right between it, there's a little piece of wood. That's where the lock is. So take your key, put it right on the lock, so not underneath, but right on it. Yep, there you go. And go ahead and twist it back and forth. Make sure you unlock it. All right? Then we're going to stop right here, take our hands, and plop them over. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you another story. And this story is called the bunny story. So we have a family of bunnies. We have Papa Bunny. Papa Bunny is chilling. All the way over here, probably closer to this metal part. So remember, mm -hmm, yep, so put your thumb there. Papa Bunny's chilling over here, all right? He has his family, but right now he can be over here. Papa Bunny has three kids. He has the twins. The twins are going to stay together, and they're kind of old, so they're allowed to kind of put their feet in the water, right? And then you have Baby Bunny. On violin and viola, Baby Bunny has to sit on top of the deck. But, good news. We're bassist. So Baby Bunny's more like Toddler Bunny, and he's kind of kicking his feet in the water, all right? So he's not as deep down as the twins, but he's not all the way up. Now, on the other side, you have Mama Bunny, and Mama Bunny lives in this little cove. And then you also have a smiling shark. The shark is smiling because Mama Bunny's happy. If the shark is frowning, Mama Bunny isn't so happy. So... Um, we're going to play another game called Bump Debump. It's with your thumb. So this is bumped, this is debumped. Right? So bump, debump, bump, debump, bump, debump, bump, debump. Alright, now go ahead and take your hand off the bump, shake it all around. How am I supposed to be bumped? You're supposed to be bumped, bumped so that you have a smiley shark and mama bunny's happy. Okay. And can you go ahead and lead me through the bunny story? Papa Bunny's on top. Well, first I've got a key. Mm -hmm. Papa Bunny, twins. 
and I gave each other bunny. Are your twins in a fight? No, they're next to each other. Okay, now they're. Now they are. And what about, go ahead and hold it with your left hand too, so that you don't feel a lot of strain on it. And then, happy shark, mama bunny hiding inside. Mm -hmm. I think your twins want to go a little bit more in the water though. Right here, they're kind of just resting on top. Make sure they're a little bit more in. They can really get in there. Okay. And now, um, the important thing about bow hand is that it's nice and flexible and neutral. So we're going to go ahead and stir a big pot of soup. What kind of soup would you like to make? Oh, turkey soup. Turkey soup. So we're making a really big pot of turkey soup. And then what kind of smaller soup do you want to make? Pea soup. Now we're making a really, like, not a big, not not huge, but not small bowl of pea soup. And one more bowl of soup. Another. Another type of soup. All right. And we're going to do this one with just our fingers. So make sure um, that you are pinky. Where's your baby bunny going to be? Sort of in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and where's Papa Bunny? Up here. Yeah, there you go. All right. Now we're going to land on our landing pad. Right? Three, chuck out your bow hand. Make sure that everything's all nice. And we're going to blast off to Mars. One, two, three. Woo! And make sure you have lots of mobility. And then we're going to land back. We're going to land on Mars. And our landing pad are our fingers. We want to keep them nice and relaxed to absorb the shock. Landing in three, two, one. Good job. Okay, now take it off again. And we're going to play a game called Fastest Bow Hand in the West. <laughs> so this is how we hold our bow in resting position. So on our right hand, so like this. So um, with the stick facing towards you. So other way. Oh. There you go. So Fastest Bow Hand in the West, tell me how fast you can get your big bow hand. Mm -hmm. And... Tell me about your bunny story. Make sure it's all right. Papa Bunny looks like he could be a little bit deeper in the water. There you go. All right, that looks nice and good. Now let's go ahead and make sure you're smiling, shark. All right. So now let's go ahead, pick up the base. Try remembering to make up the cutter first, so I'll pick this up and make it bigger. And do you remember the baseline to Mary had a little part? No, because we talked a little bit about that last time. We didn't talk no. about buns. No, we did. We did make it bigger. Oh yeah. Um, let's go ahead. Um, listen to me play it once and sing it, and then the second time we'll play around it. All right. So go ahead and sing it on controller, soul pitch, whatever makes you happy. Um, and we're going to do a D. One, two, ready, go. Mary. Mary. Okay, so we're going to start over. <laughs> one, one, two. And sing the bass line. One, two, ready, go. Do, so, do, so, do, do, do. So, 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 do, do, do. Do, so, do, so. Can you go ahead and pizzicato that while I play? Yes. Melody. One, two, ready, go. Good job. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and try that with our bow. Right? So go ahead. Do a brief, short version of the bunny story, whatever you need to get it to where it needs to be. Papa, twins, mama. Where's mama? I can't. Ah, uh, there I can see her. Make sure that she's nice and bumped, or else mama will get squished. So, with which fingers am I actually holding the bow? All of them. Because I'm finding it difficult to flatly hold everything like this. Mm -hmm. Am I just supposed to squeeze it in so between? So, right now I think the problem is that your fingers are a little bit like... This. And 
they supposed to be looped under? So they're not necessarily looped under, but they're curved. So see the difference between this and this. Okay, because I can't keep my middle fingers together and do that. I feel like. Mm -hmm. So your middle fingers should be your middle fingers should be right on the other side of your keyhole. Okay. So let me go ahead and see. So get your um, fingers a little bit more under. So try taking your so hold your bow in your left hand and take your right hand off and just place it like this. So see how deep my fingers are? Oh, okay. No, now it makes more sense. So even a little bit deeper than that. Deeper? Which which fingers? Your middle fingers. Like that? Mm-hmm. Yep, and same with your top one. There you go. Mm-hmm. And... Alright, now make sure you're smiling, Shark is smiling. So right now, you're going a little bit under, and I think that might be a problem, is that you're going through your keyhole. Make sure your keyhole is right here. So we'll just uh, dig it up like this. I should do this one. But so it'll be like right here. So if your bow is facing like this, it should be perpendicular to the floor. And let me go ahead and see that. Yeah, that looks much better. Um, so there's three lanes on the base. If this is our thing, if this is our highway, we have lane one, lane two, and lane three. They all have different purposes. Um, you play it down here. If you play really high, you play up here if you want a ponticello sound. But for right now, we're going to aim for lane two. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's actually, before we go to that, just go ahead and start by playing on your open G string and just give me a full bow. <laughs> G G D D A A E D. And then repeat and go back up. Good job. So you heard how it kind of had that harmonic -y sound. Mm -hmm. So the hard thing about the bass, um, that bow, I rosined it yesterday, so it should be good. Um, rosin, by the way, is the, uh, yeah, okay, so you know what rosin is. Um, so in order to really get the bass to resonate, if you kind of do a really shallow bow stroke, it's just going to hit the harmonics. So you have to really dig in. Um, let me go ahead and show you, just so you can watch the weight of my arm. Actually, start our base from scratch again. So feet together, put them out in a V, step out, go ahead and sway, and bring it in. All right? Now let's go ahead and try that again and really dig in. Use your entire arm. <laughs> There are three things that affect sound, uh, that affect tone production. There's weight, speed, and like bow angle. So um, in order to get a lot of sound, with bass, you actually don't want to go a super fast bow. Because you want each little part of the, each little hook on the hair to attack it. So a lot of weight and not a super fast bow. Um, go ahead and start on your G-string, because your G-string is going to be the easiest one to play. And you're gonna play the bass line. Okay. Do you think you can do that? Mm -hmm.
to and go. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, right. start over. One, two, ready, go. super bent so go ahead and let it hang um, and so do whatever adjustments you need to do to be able to reach this whether that's bringing the bass a little bit closer to you mm -hmm. um, so yeah you shouldn't have to necessarily bend your arms so much yeah okay um, now we're gonna go ahead and play the melody um, so can you sing the melody with me while I play it um, one one, two, ready, go. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. His fleece was white as snow. And can you put sulfur syllables on that? Mi, re, do, re, mi, 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 re, re. I'm singing. Oh, oh. Ray, 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 me, 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 ray, do, ray, me, 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 ray, ray, me, ray, do. Good. All right. And so if do is our open G string, um, what is ray? Uh, if do is our open G string, open or D. me, do is open G, so that... Op D is open D, because we're in the key of D right now. Okay, so do is open D, so me would be... Here. Mm -hmm. And where's right? Yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and just try to play it right off the bat. I think you're ready for that. But we're going to go slower. So you can play. Let me find the. So remember what we said was a potential thing if we drop our can of soda? Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and actually start with our soda can out the side again. So it's making sure our thumb is behind and keeping our elbow off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's try everything at a much slower pace. One, two, ready, go. Press, press more mm -hmm. on the bow. That's yeah. what I was so, uh, realizing. <laughs> so right now, something that you also re realize, you kept bumping into your A string, and that's also just because you're kind of just skating along, and when mm -hmm. you're just skating along on the surface, it's easier for your bow to skip and go to different places. Mm -hmm. So when you really dig in nice and deep, it's even better. Um, and I could tell which fingers you're playing. Do you remember where your fingers should be? When oh, you're they shouldn't them? move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and try it one more time and putting a lot of weight on your. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Okay. Um, and do you think you can take a little bit faster? Yeah. Maybe. One, two, ready, go. Um, now, how fast should your bows be? Slower, but I felt like for the faster tempo. So let me go ahead and I to go faster. So right now you're kind of doing a. <laughs> So a little bit, if you 
can go however however much bow you need to get that good sound. So right now that means not as big of bows. Yeah. Um, if I'm standing completely on this side, is that wrong? Yeah. So um, I think one thing that you might have been doing is you were mirroring me. I was doing this. And so you were stand you were stepping out with your right foot. So try um, Well it's in the right with... spot. I think it's just Yeah. I think I was doing this to get closer. Yeah, so you don't wanna put the weight you don't wanna be a sassy girl because yeah. you'll um, lose feeling in your foot. <laughs> you'll bring so much weight in that. But um go ahead and try to bring the face a bit more like that. Okay. So you want the ribbing to be right on your stomach, right over here. Got it. And can you reach the side of the base like that? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and turn your body a little bit more. So turn your body, not the base. Yeah, like that. So maybe step out your right foot a little bit more forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now try. Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. when you play two notes at once. And so we're going to be focusing on the G string. So, or on your D string. So go ahead and play the D string. Um, and we're going to have really long, slow bows for this. And play your D string, then add your G. And then the next bow, play your D string for the first half, then add your A. Okay? Okay. So do you get what we're doing? Just a little so pivot. Just... So start on your D. Oh, start on Do you want me to... Um, no, I mean... Yeah, there you go. I feel like they just become yeah scratchy. At yeah, that at point. that point, yeah. But did you feel in your arm the angle that it took to hit? How the angle seemed to be much less to hit your D and your A string Slightly, than your D yeah. and your G string. Mm -hmm. So you have all that room before you hit another string. So I think right now you might be a little bit too afraid of hitting that string, and you're a little bit too of a shallow of an angle. So go ahead and try to bring your arm up a little bit more. So make sure it's nice and relaxed. Good. And now keep those feelings um, in your mind of what the angles were. And let's try it again. And this time, your goal above intonation or anything else is to only hit your G string. Okay. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Okay, sorry. I have to... I have to find the spot first. string. I think the reason is, is I'm trying to play the string flat, and is it supposed to be slightly mm -hmm. like yeah. that? So okay, you want so your stick to the scroll. 
Oh, okay. So that was a big problem. Yeah, I so thought it was supposed to be like that. So, uh, oh, well, that so makes... that's another thing here. So I'm going to show you just so you can step away from it and see it. So the one thing that we never, ever, ever want to do is this. Oh, well, so that's bad. I was doing that, I think, the whole time. This is okay. You were a little bit like this. This is okay, but you can also play like this. So it depends. For me, I can play like this more comfortably, uh, but Jeff. Plays like this. Yeah. So it just, it's whatever angle makes your hand the most comfortable with your wrist, mm -hmm. which is never going to be this one. Yeah. But as long as your stick is perpendicular or face up, it's whatever angle your bow is most comfortable at. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and put your string on the bow on the string and feel around with those angles. That makes your arm look much less awkward. And the intonation. I said bigger bows. I don't want to confuse you with what I said previously. Um, when I said make sure if you're worrying, if you're skidding on top, these shorter bows. Um, when I said bigger bows, one thing with string instruments is you want the bow changes to be inaudible. So you don't want oh. it to be like da, 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 da. So bigger, more Legato. connected Legato Legato. bows. Let's go ahead and try it one last time with me playing along with you. sense by the end. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how close the hair gets to the stick, mm -hmm. I think. And it bends a lot. There's a lot of yeah. mobility in it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> Great. Um, so if we went over briefly what we learned today, we worked on stepping out, mm -hmm. hitting the base close to us, reviewed our coat can, we learned the bunny story and all about flexible moving both hands, um, and then we learned the melody to marry, and we were able to play both the melody and the bass line with mm -hmm. a bow. Which is pretty good for 40 minutes of bass. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome to our final bass lesson. Um, so the goal of today is to learn how to play our D major scale. So we're going to do a couple different things to get ourselves to that point. Okay. Um, so go ahead and pick up your bass. And can you show me how we start? Feet together, step foot apart, step nice and loose, step up a little bit and bring it in. Okay, and what about our left hand? Coat can, bring it straight over. Mm -hmm. And remember the first thing we do with our bow? Yes. So, things are up here. Oh, tighten it. Yep. Ta -da. And what was the rule of thumb that I said for how much to tighten it? Uh, smile. Yes. We don't want to go too far on one side. Maybe a little bit more than that. I can't even tell. Yeah, bass bow, especially this bow, gets really tight when it's not. It's hard to uh, tighten it, but it's not that tight yet. Ha! I am strong. And that's not really good. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Alright. So can you go ahead and walk me through the bunny story? Pop the bunny on top. Siblings, baby. And smiling shark. Good there job. Go. Okay, um, so 
Do you remember Mary Had a Little Lamb? I do. Do you remember what the bass line was? Okay, do you want to play it with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play it together. One, two, ready, go. Sound? Yeah, I remembered halfway through to turn my bow a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I noticed that. And it got a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was definitely weird. Yeah. So, um, the bass notes are dull and soul, which in the key of D are... D and A. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we have easy. So far, we've had it nice and easy. We've only done D and A. Um, with our open strings, mm -hmm. but we have one more option for A in first position. Okay. Can you guess where that is with our deductive reasoning? So, uh, oh, like what else is an A? Oh. Yeah, that's our open A. Oh, open A and... <laughs> so first finger is E, second four finger is F, open string is G, So we have one more A that we didn't know about until now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now this time we're gonna have a little bit more freedom, and you're gonna improvise the bass line. Okay. So now different options you have. So we're still just gonna stick with D and A, but you have another option for the A. Mm -hmm. You can do cool rhythms, whatever you want. Okay. So this time all of you have a bass line you would do by yourself. Let me just find A first. And I'm going to go ahead and write in your case, because we'll be doing a little bit of later. So, okay. Give me one second to get this one. Let's go ahead and play Mary, um, and you're improvising your bass line. Okay. Whoa, sorry. There's a bass line. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, very important. Okay. One, two, ready, go. much more melodic. This time try to add some cool rhythms and don't show me that you're playing with your first finger. Okay. So make it not clear. So let's go ahead and start um, from scratch. So feet together, put your feet in a V, step out, bring the bass in, put our can of coke on the side, bring it in, and then show me fastest bow hand in the west. Nice, and get your twins a little bit more down in there. Good job. Okay. And do you have a smiling shark? There you go. Um, so now improvise with different rhythms, with different notes, and keep your left hand good. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Scale. So the scale we're focusing on right now is D major. 
Um, so we're going to stay in first position for about three quarters of the scale, but then we're going to switch up to something that we call third position. Okay. Okay. So you see I have a, a little tape line here. Mm -hmm. That's where you have your hands in first position, third position, first finger, and fourth finger. Okay. So go ahead. Um, and so our fingering for um, the top half of our D major scale. So. So G is open, A is with one. I'm oh, sorry, are we starting yeah. at G? So we're just going to start at G. Oh, okay. To get the shifting. Okay. Then we'll, all right, so now we're going to shift up, and our first finger is going to be where that tape would be. But we're going to play with our second finger. So keep your first finger at the tape. Yep. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. So let's actually go ahead. I think you're hearing that. I think I have to. Yeah. So let's right. go ahead and start on our lower D. Thanks. start um, and we're going to do A, B, C sharp, D, C sharp, E, C sharp, D, C sharp, E, C sharp, D. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So just start on your A so you hear that dominant sound. High A. Oh. So what we're going to be focusing on is shift between the default first position and third yeah. position. Okay. Um, so. Do you have any questions on shifting so far? No, it's actually easier than I thought. Um, what I'm actually finding that you will not have a problem with with your young not students uh, is my pregnant belly is getting in the way. Yeah. <laughs> so the bass is, is kind of sliding because I don't really have a hip yeah. place. So I, w I was actually thinking about that last night when I was playing. So let me yeah. try um, So I think of the bass as going, if the base is facing towards this wall, mm -hmm. I'm facing towards that corner. Okay. Um, and then... So maybe I'm too parallel to it. Yeah, I think you might be either too much like this, which is kind of hard. Yeah. Um, so next time when you try stepping out, step out only with your right foot. Okay. And step out a little bit in front. And, and see bring it if, in like, that way. Yeah, so... Your base is going to be facing this way, and you're going to be facing right, towards this corner. picture. So more towards that. Mm -hmm. And then one other thing that can help with stability, um, right now you only have one point of constant contact. Mm -hmm. um, so if we try to touch the base with our inside of our left knee. so that I should, I should do that? Yeah. Oh, see I find that my hip pops then. Yeah, so that actually, would you mind if we brought it down a notch? Yeah, I feel as though can I just do that? Because I'm lazy. Can't bend over. Actually, that would be my. Yeah, like I feel like. Yeah. It, that's a, the thing, base is not made for human beings. Uh -huh. It's too big and we all have such different frames. Yeah. No, that makes a lot more... Yeah, because I feel like I can hold it better. Mm -hmm. um, Bowing might be different, but... Yeah. But at least for learning, I feel like the lesser of two evils is being further away from the bridge mm -hmm. than further away from you know, dropping the base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, go ahead and try to step a little bit more forward with your right foot. Yeah. Okay. 
So how does that feel? That feels even better because then it feels like this whole part is kind of just resting on my belly. Yeah. And I feel more comfortable being closer to this, actually. Mm -hmm. And it's that's something that I can't relate to, having not been pregnant with the face yeah. yet. <laughs> um, because, yeah, so for me, I don't touch it on the ribbing, which is the side piece. Mm -hmm. I just touch it on this little back angle right, right here. And but I also don't have the and, baby. And that was my intention, because I wanted to put it, like, right mm -hmm. between my, you know, my hip bone and kind of my belly, except that's changing yeah, every so, week. So I guess that makes sense that when the belly comes out, it just yeah. kind of rests more. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I think that's something that, and not even just pregnant students, but like if you have one that's just has a belly mm -hmm. <laughs> or like doesn't have that, that little spot for their hip. Yeah. Um, you know. Okay. So go ahead and try, try the whole scale okay. um, and see how that feels with the base in that kind of different position. Spatially, um, I did notice my fingers freaking out, like yeah. I like to go yeah. like this. Yeah, um, and that's normal, especially as you include the element of shifting. Yeah. Um, one more thing that is now more evident with the lower bass. Um, go ahead and do one big down bow and stop yeah. the tip. So oh. stop there. So you really want to go and do a little bit more. Okay. Down. So as your arm moves, your angle that. has to move because you're kind of. Okay. Bringing it up, but it's starting uh, to point down. And then the same thing when you bring it back, if you leave it like that angle, it'll start to point down that way. Okay. So it kind of has to be this correction in your yeah. wrist. Yeah. That's much straighter. string because it's a little bit of a farther reach. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and start A, B, C sharp, D, and then pause. What happened? Well, let me just... Yeah, just try it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm hearing it in G again. Yeah. Sorry. So go ahead and start on your A. That might be a little bit easier. Ah, uh, so it should be up higher. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what I'll be able to time for because I know you need to get going. Um which is fine. That helped a lot though, I think just realizing yeah. I think half the battle is finding out how to comfortably mm -hmm. I mean the, the base is <laughs> Face doesn't change, but every person changes, and it's really hard to find mm -hmm. what's comfortable. It took me years to find what's comfortable. Right. And it, it's hard. It just really takes some time. Okay, what if I stand differently? What if I put the base out differently? Mm -hmm. um, a new thing that people have been doing, um, Danny Zeman has one. It's a bent end pin. Mm -hmm. So here's the base, and then the end pin goes like this. So that the end pin is like straight and the base is at an angle. Yeah, more like this. Yeah, it's weird. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I don't know if I'll shift to that line of playing. Yeah. But that's something that people, again, base is just not made with an easy line. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have any other questions on base? Um, that's, I'm glad I learned a scale. I didn't think a scale would be that straightforward. Mm -hmm. But um, it's pretty easy on string instruments. Yeah. yeah. If once you understand how they work, they make sense. And I think that this relationship makes more sense because for me, not having a fingerboard, because mm -hmm. I only have experience on guitar, was very strange to me. But I yeah. think it's just, you do just realize, like with voice, you just can kind of pick out yeah. where those 
feelings are. Yeah. And I think just, uh, obviously the changes are, take time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, does anything ever happen in between here and here? Within a key? Within? Within, like, I don't know, is there ever a reason you would be like this? Or anything? Yeah. So, different places I can have my fingers. So what we didn't go over, so we have first position. We almost have half, half position. So you can be in any of these positions. The thing with string instruments is like you teach positions like first position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position, up to a point. But then it gets to a point where you, you, nobody knows what position you're in. Yeah. <laughs> but but for a diatonic scale, you're in first and third positions. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. But so yeah, you definitely could play that if you were in a the key of D flat. You play that. I mean, yeah. D flat is my least favorite. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Yeah, of course. That's for you. And that's yours. For yeah. Us. Cool. All right. Let's turn this off. I know. I'm trying not to say anything awkward on the video. <laughs> All righty. I'll be upstairs. We All have right. Cookies. If you want a cookie, I might come with you yeah. and get a cookie right now. They're, they're like butter cookies.